on now. Now that we find ourselves with three new bosses to face, I guess the question is, which one do we go after first? We've already dealt with absolutely everything else we could beforehand, so... Hmm. Miney, miney, miney. Let's go after Tinker Knight. Yes. Oh no, I just feel like going after this one first. Let's go! It's shoveling time in the clock tower as we go after Tinkerman. Night. I still have that problem. <laughs> anyway, I really, really love to stay heavy music in this particular stage. And we're going full on clock tower mode right now. We got the gears, we got the ominous music, we got the conveyor belts. It's a bit of everything. That's some clockwork of mice. You are best fought at a distance of nowhere near them. The problem being, if you get it within five miles of the guys, they'll just freaking dive bomb you on their bellies. It gets kind of hard to actually sneak a hit in before they crash into you, so let's just kill them off. And here we have a bit of gearomancy going on. Not too surprising that there's a lot of gear base obstacles in the Clock Tower stage. It's all about keeping things moving. These particular giant gears come at a set of time, so as long as you know where they spawn, you'll know when to just go ahead and get out of the way. But they got a secret room! And here we just have to do a bit of bouncing as if we were playing a Mario World bomb hack. Play ourselves some more money! Hello, gear! Can I come back now? Thank you. Yeah, you can kind of see the set locations of the gears when coming on back down. Now here we have another pit to take a look at. Oh, it's in the sparkly pit today! We have another trail pull! Unfortunately, our chalices are full, and that one only gives a night door of fortune, so I have no interest in it. This room, you're gonna want the anchor so hard. Get that thing on screen, and be abusing it. I want the magic! I want it! I want it! Stupid single pixels. <laughs> We're here though, just take your time. Sneaking it down, stop when that guy's about to go crazy. Otherwise, you will regret it! Nothing too difficult about anything so far though. Give yourselves a little blue boost here. And now we have to pull every dodge fancy maneuvers! Not so much a dodge, but you know, whatever. Trying to actually hit that particular enemy with the shovel is not something you're going to want to be trying to do. They'll come start lunging at you from above, and well, there's not a whole lot you can do in that position. Alright, so these guys happen to be gear mancies of sorts. You can tell which way they're going to fire the gear based on where they, they're aiming. When they aim high, it goes counterclockwise, and when they aim low, it goes clockwise. Because everything's all about circles in this thing. Speaking of clockwise, the secret to this room is to go such. If you go clown-or-clockwise, that rat's gonna cause a lot more trouble. I just going clockwise, so I'll just go ahead and stab him into the pit. Then the Starfield will try to get you from a much worse angle, seeing so you know, them. Details. We're in a clock tower! Listen to the clock tower. There's the use of heads. We're definitely in a clock tower. <laughs> Getting a little Castlevania in here all of a sudden! Also, be prepared for a dirty trap! Now, the game's pretty merciful about where it spawns the Medusa heads. When you get to the extreme edges of the screen, it won't bother. Which is really good, because that way you don't have to worry about them suddenly popping on screen and destroying you. You wanna go? You wanna go? Yeah, we, we went. We went. You lost. <laughs> oh, right. A few more conveyor bells to deal with and lots of shiny gems littered all over the place. As we found ourselves, the relic of this stage. We're in a clock tower, Chester. What can you possibly have for us? <sighs> Mobile gear. Of course it's a gear. What else would it be? It does help us get a little boost, though. And not a whole much else. It's capable of riding over spikes. This doesn't come up very often, but eh, 
And it will automatically jump over small gaps like this, so you don't even have to worry and just let it go on autopilot. It even sticks to the wall a little bit for us. Are you back? You're back! Look! We saw this match ended the first time, you died! Congratulations! Gonna you know, this just in case, because there's a few more Medusa heads to deal with, and quite frankly, I don't like them. Oh dear god! <laughs> it's a good thing I have reaction times, because that missile almost pulled a fast one on me. The pink gem's not worth going for, since you need a boost. Or you can jump from the conveyor belt, which is also risky. And there's nothing else up there, so you may as well not bother. These weird barbershop platforms, you can just keep jumping on them, otherwise they'll kind of bring you down to the ground. This is a kind of dangerous music scroll to go after, but... The Middle Gear... I said Middle Gear. Mobile Gear will help you out with this one. Give you a little boost up here. Careful on the way back down! It does have a tendency to want to drop you in a very precarious location. There we go. It's all about gear safety. So now, we actually have a room that the, mail, that the mobile gear can actually cheese. Figured cheese, would you like some of the form of fire, you pesky rat? All you gotta do is pull off fairly quick maneuvers, and you don't even have to follow the auto-scrolling platform at all. This is actually far easier, as all you have to deal with is timing this right. Fellow is actually a combination of the red and the green knights, so you don't want anything to do with him if you can't. Hello? The clockwork mice work a hell of a lot like the various ground based enemies from Mega Man, that uh, they get faster when you're on the same level as them. You can bounce on these gears if you want. It helps out for trying to get through to safety. A mysterious wall chicken to grab. Go ahead and grab that magic before we head on down to the lower road, courtesy of falling through one of the barbershop platforms. This segment features falling gears of all things. But hey, there's another shiny fishing hole to go to. What's in this one? More golden fish! I suppose we can take more money. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? This room's all about just taking your time, waiting for the gears to fall as they go to set rate. And here we have a third music scroll. Oops. Man, I shot those anchors really badly. Whatever, that one was good. Um, kind of want to grab that magic. Here we go. It's not really a whole lot this guy can do if you use the anchor on him. Man, I'm just timing this all sorts of badly today. Oh well. Don't destroy the wall on the left. It's just a star be ready to completely smash into your face. It looks like something destroyable, but there's no reward for you other than pain. Regular yellow knight, like he's gonna do anything. So here we have a fairly precarious section. Missiles are kind of random during that first stretch, so, uh... They can actually spawn in some very dangerous places and result in a rather... Whew, close-looking run right there. I need to equip the freaking locket because I had a funny feeling that they weren't going to behave this time. Usually they actually position themselves in a way that you can get a quick boost and actually speed around the ladder a little bit, but... This time they wanted blood! Once you get past the little bit head missile sections, though, the rest of it's nice and easy. Not really anything else up here, so let's move along. Now, if you want your heal in here, you have to not lower the platform first. It's good looking to it at this point. So, we're gonna be showing a particular secret about Tinker Knight, so I hope you'll enjoy it, but let's go take a bit and pay him a visit. 
Goodness, our antics must have been e echoing through the entire tower! You shouldn't have called him little. <laughs> so about him! Congratulations, we saw everything he does! Except for sometimes he'll freak out and fire branches all over himself, but that's about the only other thing. <laughs> yeah, Tinker and I has two forms because the first one's so pathetic. Giant neck! So that doesn't make sense when you're Tinky Knight. So once you get up here, it's really kind of easy to keep hitting them. You can literally just walk off the platform and hold down, and you will be hitting Tinker Knight. That's embarrassing, really. Poor guy. Well, that was sure a boss now, wasn't it? <laughs> Tinker Knight is probably the easiest boss in the entire game to do no damage, if you know about the trick to his first form. Man, I just feel sorry for the guy. His first form's already pathetic and a joke, like, on-purpose joke. And his second form is incredibly embarrassingly easy, if you know how to stay on there. He launches backwards to fire the flurry missiles at set amounts of HP, so... If you know those amounts of HP, you just know when to expect it, then stay on the platform, continue downstabbing him. There's literally nothing he can do. It's... I, I feel so bad for him. I mean... All he ever wanted to do was create, and... All he ever did was destroy his very creations. It had to be put in his place. Creations are not meant for destruction. He should learn how to create things for good. For good! And justice! And chivalry! Hey, you can make me a mechanical shovel, that'd be awesome. Yeah, let's think about that. <laughs> oh, but first we have another bonus boss to go ahead and deal with. Hey there, buddy! How's it going? Let's tell you yourself a visit. Oh, what a beautiful, eye piercing sunset. Thank you. That's much better. And so he meets the rather ugly, pondering warrior, High Phantom Striker. <laughs> Your spite did not translate too well into this game, did it? He's pretty much just your standard, I'm going to test the power of the legendary knights of each area, because I can. But he uses the power of lightning! Lightning! Oh, that's enough stabs, thank you! You can tell what attack he's going to use based on the number of lightning bolts that come down when he summons lightning. I'm saying lightning a lot. Whoa! 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 Dodge it! Not careful, he's going to go for more lightning. Here we go. Whew, that was almost greedy there. Okay, watch out for the homing one more time. Down! Perfect! Shovel victory! <laughs> okay, so the reason why you want to take down Phantom Striker as fast as possible, and thus as greedy as possible, is because once he does full two rotations of his pattern like that, he was about to start a wind gimmick, where the wind is so strong, you cannot get out of the way of his moves in time, so you have to actually try to jump for them, and yeah, trying to actually land a hit on him at that point is much, much harder, so that's why I aim for the quick kill to get him down before that actually pops up. He'll show up in the outtakes, just putting that there now. <laughs> Basically, this guy has different dialogue depending on how well you do against him, and it'll give you a different path depending on how well you against, do against him. Gives you a good old 2,000 gold to work with if you beat him either flawlessly or at least close enough to flawlessly. You get a couple of hits of leeway. Either way, with him down, that's actually all of the optional bosses in the game. So, I guess we're just gonna have to put this last battlefield here ado. As well as the awesome music that plays during all those bosses. Goodbye, little grab grass field, even though that's the sun in the background, as we found out before. Ah, classic 8-bit. Oh man, continuing inconsistencies, because things don't take the first try, and they do move around when you load the game back up. 
I finally only dress this now, after like five instances of this. Anyways. With that one done, though, we've cleared out the night stage. And, well, it was pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Finish off Banish Jackie. That was harder than the actual Tinker Night stage. But there are probably a few things to show here as some post content, though. So, you know, I know Fan Striker didn't take the first attempt, so we'll see how the rest of it goes. In the meantime, though, I do want to thank everybody for watching this particular part, and I'll see you again for more Shovel Knight next time. So, until then, see you later. And whether or not we'll go after the, the airship or the bullet cave. You'll find out next time, because I'm like that, and I don't like to tell in advance. This has been dragging on a little while, but I don't care, I do this anyways. got nailed by a missile. That's just sad. See the low ceiling is slipping and nah. Next! There's some careful work with the mobile gear here and we can get ourselves a sound scroll. Oh come on! I slipped! I feel greatly saddened by myself right now because both of the failures today have been absolutely hilariously bad. <laughs> Down after five. Under you. Once he starts doing this, though, kind of not want to put up with this nonsense at all. Sir, could you come over here? Sir, please come over here. Damn it. You want to try to kill him before the wind starts up. You can tell what attack he's going to do based on the number of lightning bolts that come down. I got greedy. Okay, now things are gonna get tricky because I didn't kill him fast enough. After he does that twice, he'll actually go for the activating some wind over here, and then good luck actually dodging his nonsense. Yeah, because you have to stay close enough to him to run at him and actually get a stab in. Aside from just looking completely bonkers, this guy fights with the power of lightning! Light out! <laughs> 